have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream and as I mentioned in a previous video, I'm working on my truck. So let me tell you a little story about that. So I went ahead and ran the truck the other day after I pressure washed the engine bay and it showed a little bit of antifreeze that was coming out in a weird spot. So I checked and it was leaking just through the gasket that was right here. Uh, it was just squirting right out. Choop. It was crazy. So I thought at that point, and I already knew I was going to, and that was flushing the entire cooling system, the radiator, the engine block, everything, changing the thermostat, and putting on a new water pump at that point. And the reason is, is because the previous owner, I think, was a little bit of afraid. And I have a problem with this to some extent. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Whenever people are selling stuff, whenever they're trying to get rid of vehicles, whatever the case may be, you'd be surprised how many people will just try to get something out of their possession and into somebody else's and get their money it's because there's a problem and I don't expect to get any kind of five-star quality from the vehicles that I purchase on Craigslist but it would be nice if they were kind of forthcoming about it to some extent I won't even care so much if once the vehicle was sold and the guy had money in his hand he said hey listen this is what's wrong with the truck you bought it it's your problem now but it would have been nice to know that he was selling it because he was worried about a coolant leak. No big deal. I mean, the vehicle was well worth it. I got a great deal on it. All this repair that I'm doing is like 180 bucks. That's nothing. I mean, I don't have a problem with that at all. You'd be surprised how many people are willing to buy stuff even if they know there's a problem. I had a gentleman that came by the other day to purchase the cap that was on this truck and it was sitting in the front yard. He measured it out and asked me would it work on another vehicle and I said well it was mounted on a Ford I said but it had overhang and stuff and it, it didn't look right and he said well the one that I currently have on my truck it has a little bit of an overhang on it too and he said it's the wrong color he goes I need a white one so here I mentioned what the problem was and he didn't have a problem with that and a lot of people are that way. If he would have told me, hey, I'm selling this truck because it has an exhaust manifold leak and because the coolant has a leak that I put stop leak in the engine and it stopped for the time being, I wouldn't have had a problem with that. Even if it had a bad head gasket, I mean, I still probably wouldn't have had a problem with that. We'd have to talk price a little bit more. And I'm sure that's probably the driving force at that point. You know, they're just trying to get rid of it just to get to where they have as much money as they possibly can. I know that he took a bath on this because he purchased this thinking and it didn't need anything. But he did a lot of repairs trying to get it ready to start towing out to Arizona, which it needed more than what he could provide. So I've got it all tore apart. You can see I got a little bit of a mess because I was working late last night. I was trying to rush it. I hate whenever I try to rush. I've got that Permatex or what they call Indian head. It's great sealant. I always put it on gaskets and it always does a good job. However, we ran into a problem with this oil cooler. and It's just a really tight fit. I don't know if you guys with 460s and motorhomes know, but there's a little tiny hose that goes from here over to a pipe that's on the water pump. You can pretty much have to take your oil cooler off or your water pump off to change that hose. Now, did those hoses need changed? No, not necessarily. Those hoses were in pretty good shape, but again, for peace of mind, let me go ahead and start off fresh and get a new hose on there so I know how old it is and I don't have to worry about a hole in the future. Everybody watching my channel that has a 460 motorhome, this is what it looks like to replace your water pump. And again, it's nothing crazy. It's pretty straightforward. And I really enjoy working on these engines. And it's one of the reasons that I went with this style of an engine and an older Ford based on the fact that the new modular engines, I just don't know that much about them. Uh, I've seen this before. This scene that we're looking at right now, I've seen many times uh, on small blocks mainly, but also on a couple big blocks. So again, nothing out of the ordinary. I'm getting kind of close. Basically what I was trying to do without Heidi knowing was I was going to get the camper winterized and we were still going to do a little bit of winter camping. We were actually going to go camping uh, over the weekend, even though it's gotten much colder out. I uh, thought it'd be a nice surprise uh, just for her to get out and be able to relax a little bit. She's got a lot of stuff going on at work. They're downsizing 
Uh, maybe her and I will do a little bit of video on that because that is definitely a little bit of a story that needs to be told to some extent as far as where she stands and her work. But the uh, truck itself, man, I, I love it. So far, this is great. Uh, again, these repairs, no big deal. As far as the extra money spent, no big deal on that either. I mean, I expected to do this kind of stuff. Overall, though, the final product is really going to be top-notch. So let me go ahead and start working on this. I have to take uh, my daughter to work today. Good thing I still have my old truck. We'll come back and show you it all together and running. So let me go ahead and break away, do some work, and we'll come back. All right, guys, I'm back, and we're all finished. Uh, let's go take a look at the truck real quick. Yeah, really quiet. I love it. And it's not leaking. You can see the new water pump in there. And I also got rid of the smog pump. So the smog pump has been bypassed. I'll show you that here in a second. I've got a little bit of a miss, not much. Once I clean the fuel injectors and replace the spark plug wires and cap and rotor with something a little bit better, that should take care of it. If not, I'll put an ignition box on it to uh, heat this thing up and make it run a little hotter as far as the spark goes. There's the smog pump. Uh, the guy put a brand new one on there, so obviously I'll clean that up a little bit and put it on Craigslist because there's people that want to retain them and they do go bad occasionally. And they run about $100, so that'll be nice for somebody. I have a whole bunch of housekeeping to do. My garage is a disaster. Ugh. It's Friday. It's nice. I'm glad that I got this all done. Of course, I'm going to run the truck really hard <laughs> and uh, see what else might decide to leak or break. Uh, I've got some other stuff that I need to do to it, which I know that it needs an oil change, and the oil is about 300 miles before it's expired. I want to make sure that the truck is running good overall before I make any changes to it whatsoever. After the oil change, then I'm going to look at the transmission fluid and also the differential. I noticed that the differential cover is pretty rusted. It's probably time to change the fluid because I don't know how much the previous owners did on this. So I'm getting this thing all set up and making it to where this winter I don't have to worry about it. And then at that point, I can sell my other truck and not use it anymore. Even though it's good on gas and I love driving it. It'll be nice to uh, have that extra money to sink into whatever else we may need to do to this truck or other things for that matter. So that's it. I'm all finished and I appreciate you guys watching and I hope to see you out there. Bye.